What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So I haven't done a deck guide in a while simply because, well, there haven't really been any new decks recently. The meta's kind of similar uh, to the past one, two months. Um, however, I started playing some Nilfgaard. I got bored of Enslaved because honestly, it got kind of boring after a while. And so I tried a uh, formation and it's actually pretty good. Uh, I've been having a lot of success with Formation Nilfgaard, so I decided I'd make a YouTube video of it. Um, who knows what the next patch will bring. Maybe this deck won't be viable anymore, so uh, you got a few, few days left before the December 10th patch, so until then, I guess you can play the deck. Uh, I, I honestly think it's quite good. I, In some cases, I do think it's better than Enslave, um, but yeah. Give it a try if you like playing Nilfgaard and you're bored of playing the standard uh, in Slave List. So starting from the top leader, being able to boost is quite good, uh, especially on Damien. Buffing this to 7 makes it basically unkillable against monsters. Um, a lot of decks can't kill this except Nilfgaard because of Invocation. Uh, Gigni. Gigni is MVP in this meta. Uh, the meta is strictly greed decks, so against Mystic, you have the Dryads, the Fledglings that you can kill. Uh, against Nilfgaard, a lot of them are playing the Sevens right now, uh, the Nilfgaardian Knight and the Tortoises. Um, Monsters, you have the Bleed Engines on Portal, and Syndicate, you have the Seductresses. Just a great card, if you don't believe me. Just Play the card. You'll be very surprised at how good Gigni is. Royal Decree is for consistency. Raymond, uh, your target is always going to be Tortoise, unless you get unlucky, in which case you can go for Knight. Yennefer Invocation, just a solid card. Tibor, I like the card. It's pretty good with formation. Um, typically, I put it on top, and then I pull it out with v Volgaforce if I'm playing against decks that don't go tall. Uh, if I'm playing against a really tall deck, say Monsters, and I need to use Vilgo Forts offensively, then I'll probably just play Tibor normally from hand. Um, Vilgo Forts, very flexible card, very good with leader. Zarthisius, this is the one flex card. If you don't like Zarth, you can drop it. I like it. It's kind of nice in round one and two. It's thinning. Um, yeah, I could low roll and hit like Gigni or like a Magni Division, but eh, you, you hope that it doesn't do it, but... Obviously, if you don't like the card, feel free to drop it. Not that big of a deal. Shillard's a solid replacement, so that's up to you. Uh, Afan, very good with leader. Bribery, insane card. Peter, good card in the meta. Thunder, good removal. I'm running uh, two Thunders instead of two Assassinations simply because, well, Thunder's better. If you queue into Nilfgaard, you're going to play around Assassination and put your important engines in the between two units. And yeah, the only reason Assassination is better is if your opponent's bad. Or uh, you can actually utilize a tactic um, keyword. So if you're playing Enslave and you need the tactic for your Enslave Leader ability, then it makes sense. Uh, if you're playing Hefty Hoggy, then it makes sense. If you're not playing either of those two, then it doesn't make sense. Then Thunder's better. So I, I prefer Thunder. Uh, Nilf Guardian Knight, proactive card in any round that you're going first. Ard, phenomenal card. Uh, both of these, you don't really care if you have to boost your opponent's card simply because... Well, you got tons of removal. You got Gigni, you got Peter, you got Vilgaforge, you got Invocation. Plenty of ways to remove tall cards. One Diviner, two is typically bad just because you're not going to be getting value off the second in most matchups other than maybe monsters. Um, it's it's a good card. It's your go-to to remove Defender. Tourney Joust, good removal. Battle Prep, it's just solid. It, it, it's good enough. It's not the best card ever, but it's not terrible. Uh, I, I typically keep these in round one, throw them on the night. I'm not too worried about tall. Uh, and Magni Division, eh, it's okay. Typically, you're playing specials early on, so it's a nice card to play immediately on turn one. And honestly, there really aren't better 4P cards to play. Uh, originally, I was running Nausicaa Sergeant, but this deck doesn't have a lot of deploy, so I don't think this is worth it. More often than not, Magni Division is just always going to be better. Uh, if there's something else that you'd prefer, you're more than welcome to play it. I suppose you could play Infiltrator, um, but I, I just think Magni Division is the best for the options that you have. Uh, in terms of gameplay, you don't. Wh wh one of the reasons why I love this deck is it's not all in on one gameplay plan. It's, I, I guess, the closest thing to describe it to is it's a mid-range deck. Uh, it has engine removal with cards like Assassination and Thunder. Uh, it has tempo and just mid-rangey plays with knights. Um, and it has greed removal with Gigni. I, I can't stress this enough. 
so many games I would just lose on the spot without Gigni. Gigni is such an important card because Portal is just, it's really good. And in most of the decks, you're not going to be able to outpoint it unless you play Portal yourself. Or in this case, you play Gigni. So I, I prefer the latter of the two. Um, just give it a go. You'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised. The only matchup where I'd say Gigni Bricks is against Northern Realms. Uh, Mid-range decks can play around Gigni. Um, so do keep that in mind. If you do queue into Northern Realms and you're running into like an eight or fewer card round, I suggest drawing, dropping Gigni in round three uh, or just play it in round one. Uh, if you can find yourself a good Gigni in round one against Northern Realm, just go for it. Uh, you could basically always use Gigni in round one unless they're playing a portal deck uh, or they're playing Mystic Echo. Um, yeah, hold on to Gigni if you suspect they're playing portal which isn't too hard if you're playing against syndicate and they play hounds in round one or uh whatever the card sea jackal if they play either of those two cards then they're obviously not playing portal in which case you can play gigney if they play neither of the two then you need to hold gigney for round three um mystic echo gotta save gigney for round three it's the only way you're gonna deal with the fledglings and monsters you gotta save gigney for the uh the portal because they they get quite large and out of hand um every now and then they play defender alongside with the portal in which case you get triple sevens you get a 23 point gigney and it's very very good so yeah it's just a good deck highly suggest you give it a try uh if you're bored of the enslaved meta um if you don't like zarth once again go ahead and feel free to drop it for a shield or some other nine drop that you like and uh yeah hope you enjoy the gameplay and i'll see you guys on the next one I mean, it has good matchups and bad matchups. It's just how it is. It's a cheese deck. That's how all cheese decks are going to be. Good matchups and bad matchups. Pretty common. Picola 82 with the $100,000. Thank you, sir, for the 100 bits. Not this deck, please. Yeah, but this is like the best well-rounded deck in the game. Because it does like a little bit of everything. It has control. It has points. It has tempo. It has it has everything. Whereas other decks like this deck doesn't auto lose to any deck. Whereas most other decks do. One hour we didn't win. That last deck we were playing, we won like four games in a row. And then we started queuing Squiatel. He has tall removal or Peter, so like this getting bigger doesn't really matter. It has boring. I mean, anything is boring if you want it to be boring. The Nordling's hatred for us will never win. What do you think about Control Croc? Why? Why would you play that? What is it good against? What does it do well? It's just pass. I mean, I could play the tourney joust, but... Eh, okay, I can go one card deeper. It's fine. Another 100 bits by Picola. Thank you, sir, for yet another 100. I mean, he's playing garbage. I'll play garbage. That's fine. 
Snowfguard deck is great. I was on a winning streak. Yeah, I mean, we hit 2,500 with the deck. It's a, it's the best Snowfguard deck I've played in a long time. It does well against... It, it does, like, average to well against everything. Because it doesn't all in on one game plan. Which means it doesn't get countered by a very specific deck. Right? Like, like most, most decks in the game right now, if you queue a bad matchup, your chances of winning are like 20%, 30%. Point slam? Yeah, but it's not point slam. Point slam doesn't run removal. This has a bunch of removal in it. He dry passes, I want to play this. Do I need two of these? Sure. Uh, we're looking for Vilg. That's good. That's good. Wow, good draws. He already played Hefty, so I don't need this. I don't want Tibor. Definitely don't want that, but whatever. So, fun fact, he can invocation this, and then it goes to the top and comes out. Pog. <laughs> Whose deck is this? It's my deck. Impressive. Thanks. I know. Very impressive. Is the NR Dandelion deck good? Which Dandelion Poet? No. The other one with the, the six? Yeah, it's fine. Very engine heavy. Nobody's really playing heavy removal, so yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. He should have buffed this and then invocationed it. Free points. Silly. Nice deck. I can't find it on Plague One. It's right here. Easy, Tibor. It's like Tibor, just without the one. Also, the worst possible hit. Why do you stop claiming decks? What do you mean claiming decks? You mean like putting decks on like websites? I don't know. There's no reason to. My biggest issue is you can't change the decks. Right? Like I've, I've changed this deck like eight times now. And the original version of this deck had a lot of problems. Until they make it so they can change the deck, it's useless. It's time. The technology isn't there yet. No, the technology is there. CDPR just won't add it. I, I asked CDPR and their response was people will abuse the system make one deck, and then they'll just keep updating it and farm free upvotes, which, I mean, okay, sure. But if it's a good deck, who cares? I don't know. They're worried about people, like, farming people, which I guess is a concern. Because in theory, like, let's say you make deck A, and then a month later, like, let's say it gets 200 upvotes. A month later, you could completely scrap the deck, start over, make a brand new deck 
that's completely different and it would have 200 upvotes. You could farm people. Yes. Don't teach your grandma to suck eggs. Hmm. Wouldn't want to farm people. Probably shouldn't have hit that seven. He needs no help from outsiders. So make the deck lose upvotes on edit. I mean then people would get mad. I don't know. Or just don't worry about it. I mean, I would be fine if the deck reset to zero. Well, I don't know. Maybe make it lose like 50% of the upvotes or something every time you edit. Or like 40% or like some percentage. I don't know, whatever. But until they change the system, I'm, I'm just not going to use it because it's such a pain in the butt. It's just way more effort than it's actually worth. Who gives a shit about upvotes? Uh, people do. And it's like, who gives a shit about karma? Not, not the, like, on Reddit. Some people do. Not that karma. That's that's why. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. It's too late. I mean, yeah. Whatever. If Gigni goes off, I think we win this. I just don't know if Gigni will go off. Uh, up to seven, it's the biggest card. Plays around Vogelforts, I suppose. Kind of. Oh, yay. Okay, it goes off. Nice. Alright, I mean, if he has Leo, we lose. But Peter Leo Vilg is a lot. He's a 10. I like how it tells me that I win before he actually plays the card. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Making a Squirtle deck, which one is better, Dwarfs or Harmony? Um, they do different things. Uh, if you're worried about cards like Gigni, uh, Dwarfs are going to be better. More people are teching for Harmony than Dwarves, in my opinion, so I, I, I think Dwarves are probably better right now. Uh, Eve's Drop is all turn one play a lot of the time, so we'll keep it night. Gigni? Ah, uh, it's never going to be played in round one, but we'll keep it, I suppose. Two of these is fine. Yeah, that sounds alright. You think Calanthe will be nerfed? I mean... I don't know. Is she better than most of the leaders in the game? Yep. Does that mean she should get nerfed? I'd rather the other NR factions, or the other NR leaders get buffed. 
most of the time, I'd rather other underwhelming cards slash leaders get buffed than the good leaders getting nerfed. Granted, it is much easier to just nerf the better leaders because less card changes. Um, but yes, I, I, I think CDPR does need to address the leaders at some point, hopefully this upcoming month. Um, because while the meta is pretty balanced, um, every faction is seeing love except for one. Um... For the most part, factions are only seeing like one leader play. Right? Syndicate is only wild card. Squiatel is only Mystic. Uh, NR is only Pinsir. Nilfgaard is only Enslave. Monsters is. At the moment, it's only Bleed, but you, you can play AQ and you can play. Uh... Gurney, Gurney's okay, I guess. Which faction is bad? SK. Deals, deals. It's not that bad. It, it can still win games. I'd rather kill this than this, for sure. SK, like, my guess is Shinmiri was probably playing an SK deck yesterday that was doing well. And even if SK is bad, it's not that big of a deal because SK has been the number one deck for all of Homecoming. So the fact that it's not number one for a period of time is completely fine. We'll Peter this later. But like SK will probably be tier one again. It always finds a way. So yeah, I I would like them to buff other leaders. Or 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 they can just nerf all those leaders I just mentioned, bring them down a notch, and then they're more on par with the other existing leaders. That's definitely possible. How would they nerf Mystic Echo? Mm, let's try Shakeron's playlist. They could bring P down, I suppose. Again. What happened? So, how many P was Mystic Echo before the the Mystic Echo ch change? Wasn't it like 13? Was, oh, I think it was 13. Pretty sure it was 13. It was 13? Isn't it 13 now? What happened? It went from 13 to 15 because they nerfed Francesca. It could no longer play neutral cards. And then it was broken, so it went down to 13, and it's still the best. Oh, they buffed water. Yeah. They buffed water. Huh. Water and Justice. Well, they nerfed Justice. But yeah, Justice and Dwarfs is really good. Oh, and they buffed Call. Call doesn't see too much play for, for on Mystic. Uh, I mean, it's auto including every Squire deck, but it doesn't see too much play uh, like from the Mystic leader. Unless you're going for like a 2-0 and you Call your Oak. Interesting play. I don't just want to slam Tibor. Okay. I mean, we should be favored. Does Echo need a nerf? Let's buff other leaders in Squiatal. You're right, right, and I agree. I Once again, I would much rather than buff other leaders. But what I'm saying is, nerfing Mystic Echo is one nerf versus buffing the other f five is five changes. It's much easier to make one change than it is to make five changes, right? So yes, one is ideal, but it's more work. Oh, 
Isn't the Mystic Spells with Gord the well-rounded Mystic Square deck? Well-rounded? I mean, yeah, it doesn't really break the game. The only broken card in that is Monroe. Like, the only card that's frustrating to play against for Mystic, uh, Gord is Monroe. Because Monroe is just so many points in round one. I could see Monroe getting nerfed. Could definitely see Monroe getting nerfed. Granted, if they nerf Monroe, they better nerf, like, some other cards. Like Falibor. Which I doubt they will do. So there's a, there's a decent chance Monroe doesn't get nerfed. We're looking for this or this. Nice. Nerf to Mystic won't make Aldane or Ethne better. Yep, correct. The only thing that's going to save Ethne is plus two damage or a rework. Plus one damage is not enough. Plus one damage is kind of a joke. I don't really want Eldain to be good. Yeah, so a lot of us want Eldain to be good because, oh, we want traps to be good. But making Eldain good is very scary. Um... Because if Eldane becomes good, that's the closest no unit deck you're ever going to have. Um, so, yeah. Eldane being good is very scary. Like, tier 1 good. If Eldane becomes tier 1, it's going to be the most hated deck in the game. So. Like... When it comes to Aldane, you got to make sure it's never tier 1. If it ever becomes tier 1, it's going to be problematic. Right? Like, look at Nilfgaard right now. Look at Nilfgaard and Slave. Uh, it is not tier 1, and yet everybody hates playing against it. Why? Well, it's not because it's too good. It's just because it's unfun to play against, right? That's going to be the same case, but even more so with Aldane. So, they, they can buff Aldane. They just need to never push it to tier 1. And finding that fine balance is going to be hard. Which is why, in most cases, it's probably better to just keep him shit. Like, yeah, I, I'd love Eldane to be good, but... <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. You mean plus two chargers or plus two per charge? I meant plus two charges, so you get six pings for one damage. Eldane will never be viable until Drill still Drill stays the same. I mean, Drill is a card that shouldn't exist. I I don't think Drill. I mean, I've talked about this before, but Drill should not exist in its current state. And I would say the same about the uh, Purify Engine in Syndicate. Uh, Kalkstein. I don't think Kalkstein should exist in its current state either. I should, I, I think maybe like two time use max. Right? Like if you're playing Detlaf and you queue into Kalkstein deck and they play Defender and then they play Kalkstein. You lose. Your your entire deck game plan is out the window, gone. Face your contention on the erroneous assumptions. What about Gremist? So Gremist I, I still think Gremist is too good, but Gremist is at least somewhat controllable. You can only remove one a turn um on the initial play. This can remove up to what, three? Four? Four? Unless they lead her, then it's more. And Gremis has a cap, right? Gremis is capped at one plus like two, two Freyas, maybe a Freya and a Sig. So you're capped at like three. There's no cap on this. The cap is 
non-existent. There's no cap. And it's a 7 for 7, which, yes, right now that's not great, but it's not bad considering what it can do. Right? Like, this card, if they're unwilling to remove this, it should not have a profit. What about a cooldown? Yeah, I mean... Eh. I don't know. What what this really should be is like fee 4. All right, spending two coins. Or sorry, not not this. Make it like fee 3. I mean, there's no way he'll ever play the uh thingy here, right? I mean, he could, but it'd be pretty papiga. I was saying I was saying fee fee four for the uh, tunnel drill. Make calcine eight p. Profit three fee three. Sure. Aw. I was gonna be so happy. All right. I mean, there's no movement and there's no syndicate movement, right? I mean, I suppose there could be, but this is this is two cards, so we just take the Gigni now. Not your lucky day. Even if he does have movement, they go to twelve. What about giving such cards use limit? Yeah, right. So if if they made a use limit of like two, I'd be okay with that. So you can like bait out the first two. We should win this. Nice dress. Thank you. Knowing CDPR, they'll just make a cooldown one. To be honest, I'd be fine with that. That's better than nothing. Cooldown one is a okay with me. Is this still a nutty card? Yep. But I'm okay with that. Oh, he pinged. That's interesting. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Which is bigger, six or eight? I can go with eight. But what really does Kalkstein remove? Poison, Bounty, Defender, and sometimes one three turn bleed? Yes, that's the point. The versatility is insane. And there's no downside. What? You just said why the card is insane. Right? Like, look at Ida. Look at Ida, for example. Ida's right, also 7p. 5p body, purify. Okay. It, it, like, you, you, you can also just slap it on the board. It's proactive. That's a great, great, wow. So good. Great bank. All right, so his last two cards are Graydon and, uh, Morales. Yeah, last two cards are Graydon Morales. Okay.
Wait a minute, I could have played Louisa Savola. Oh. That would have been so good. Oh well, it's too late. That's what I said. Yeah, whatever. I wasn't really paying attention. Hey, the game's over. We already won. I'm not really concerned. Go play more L's here. More owls. Oh? That's not more owls. Oh, so he missed? Didn't he play bank with like a full... He had like eight coins. I mean, there's no chance he doesn't play Graydon, right? No, there's no way. We just play this and we don't do anything with it. We don't buff, nothing. Just let him kill it. It's just smaller than seven. I'll give you a hint. You kill the card I just played. <laughs> Free advice. You're welcome. I'll give you a hint. Concede. Um, we'll see. This is worth 13. 18. 26. 52. He has to pull a 6 to tie. He doesn't have a 6 in his deck, so he wins. There's the morales. Didn't we yoink the 11? Yeah, but it's doomed, so it goes into your deck and then vanishes. Otherwise, I would have pulled out of my deck. Hmm. Maybe I should make a YouTube video on this deck. It's better than Enslave. Nobody's playing it. Sometimes the price is too damn high. This, this. It's just slow. I don't know. I'm so worried about Defender. Like, I'm gonna assassinate. And then he's just gonna play Defender, and then I cry. Or we could just roll Philippa, right? Okay. 
Well, looks like he is defender. Pretty good. Busy round one. I mean, it's gonna win him the round. It's pretty good. Oh, it's gonna be a hard game. Oh no. He actually passed. We are gonna line up a Gigni. What is Vilgworth? I don't know. It kind of depends. What if we just Gigni here? My downside with this is I can't bleed him, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna be hard. I don't know if we can win this because we're probably just gonna get overwhelmed with engines. Maybe I should have just played Vilg and just hope that he lines up Gigni for us. That might have been the winning play. He didn't play the defender yet, so I guess we'll hold on to this. And we know he has defender. Hmm. I haven't seen a uh, an R deck with Tritum in a while. Huh. Interesting. I don't think we want the Magni. That's good. I, I need the removal. I need to look for it. Okay. Didn't seem very good. How many fours are in this deck that you brick on that? Oh, I, I actually think it's just two Tridums, two Sergeants. I think that's it. Willy willy. 
Um, eh, seems like a decent invo. Well, no, we Vilgefortz it, right? We have to remove it this turn. That's no question about it. Giving two charges a turn is insane. I think I want to Vilg defensively for Tibor, which means I think we invocation this. Because the odds of him killing Damien are fairly low. Like, nobody plays the Eat Wave in these decks, right? Thank you. Another very important card I need to kill. Yeah. I mean, we can roll one of these two, right? It's the worst one, yet again. Three games in a row, Zarth is low rolled. Uh, Zarth has been... Yesterday's Zarth was really good. Today's Zarth has been really shit. Cut Zarth? I mean, he's been so good up until now. I mean, losing a 1 and 9 is not very likely. Do I need to Vilg that? We're only nine points behind, but we're a card up, and we still have 13 on leader. I don't think I need to kill it. I mean, how many charges is... Uh, I don't know. I'm not doing it now, but we might do it. We'll see. I'll think about it. Yeah, Vizigard is a card that I'm scared about. But if he had Vizzy, he should have played this next to this, because he should be wanting to boost every unit. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to commit to my line. Also, if this is the only card that gives charges, then I'm fine. I just peter this. Okay. I probably don't want to boost this. Alright, we're okay. As long as he doesn't have Yeet Wave, this should be a win. Oh, should I have played around Gigney? I could have. Well, I mean, putting the 7 up here for 21 is pretty dumb. I mean, I could leave it at 5. Can I leave it at 5? Oh, the, the simple solution is bring this to 7 and then bring this to 8. That's just the easiest line. Plays around everything. Alright, this is definitely the best line. Plays around Gigni. Doesn't play around Heat Wave, but it plays around everything else. Because we can never play around Heat Wave. Vizigard? Ah. Alright, we'll play around Vizigard. Vizigard wouldn't kill. Uh, it's pretty close. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I wouldn't have killed you, right? But we didn't get punished, so it's the correct play, Kappa. Well, 
What are the odds he plays Vincent? No, I asked because I would want to play Vilgefortz here and pull out my T-Boy. So buff T-Boy? No, because I have to use all my leader ticks. What? Doesn't make any sense. That's not how that works. Reset. Well, we're losing a point here. So if his last card is not Vincent, the better line is just to play Voga there. I save a point. I don't know. It's hard to say. Save two points. What? Well, it's a good thing I didn't build a fort. Quite the menial task. Cool. Well, we didn't lose. Nice. We would have lost if we had pulled out T-Boy that round, though. 